Welcome back to another episode of Jason's Bricks in 5, where we discuss Lego content in videos of 5 minutes or less. Today we are going to talk about a problem that every single Lego collector faces at one point or another, and that is storage and display solutions for your ever-growing Lego collection. So I've had a few people reach out asking me about the shelving units and display solutions I've used in my Lego collection back here, and that's what we're going to talk about. This is what's called the French cleat, and I found it to be quite successful. Hopefully it's something you can use as well. So before I talk about how the French cleat is built and works, I just thought I'd quickly go over the benefits that I found from this shelving solution. Uh, first and foremost, it's flexible. Um, if you're anything like me, your Lego collection is going to grow. You're going to get different sets. You're going to want to move things around. These shelves are totally flexible. They're movable, rearrangeable at any point doesn't take any effort to do that and so that's one of the greatest benefits of this shelving unit additionally it's customizable so you can build them in different sizes you can see here some of the examples they can be deep they can be shallow display all kinds and sizes of sets um, they're also fairly inexpensive really the biggest cost is going to be the wood to get these but um, other than that a little bit of paint a couple of screws and you know you can put them up. The last thing is that they are easy to build. I am by no means a master woodworker but I was able to build these and anyone that has some basic woodworking skills and some you know uh, I would say fairly basic tools can do this. All you need is going to be like a table saw, circular saw, a drill and uh, you're good to go. So the way that the French cleat works the key piece is the back top piece of the shelving unit. I started with a one by four and you cut that into two pieces at a 45 degree angle and that creates a wedge where the shelf just fits in there snugly. When you take that one by four and you cut that uh, about halfway down at a 45 degree angle, you're left with two pieces. One will be attached to the shelf, the other will be attached to the wall. Again, it will be this short side that will be attached to the wall. And this is the part where the shelf will rest. So when that's there, the shelf will just come and rest just like that. And it's mostly gravity and that groove that holds it into place. Now, a couple of things you will notice, I have taken a one by two here and put this at the bottom. That's just to provide a little bit of flushness for this back panel so that if you get a bigger set, something like that, it doesn't cause it to sag um, against the wall. This will actually sit flush against the wall and cause that to just sit level. You'll also notice the benefit of this is I have the bottom shelf here that runs all the way to the back wall flush and it's this gap here where I've actually attached this to this back piece. And then on the front this is where I've attached the back panel. So this piece here is actually what's holding the back panel and the bottom panel together. And that's simply how you make the French cleat. Now, some of the sets are quite a bit larger, you know, a UCS set, something like that. So you might need to make a bigger shelf like I've done here. Because as you go out further and add weight, you're just going to have more stress on the shelving unit caused out here. So what I've done here is I've actually taken an additional piece of 1x2 and run it along the front as well as the back. And I've used that to secure to both sides of the back panel as well as the um, bottom of the shelving unit. That way it just provides a little bit more um, strength for that shelf. So I've been really happy with these. I've had them up for about a year and a half, haven't had any problems. They've been super great and flexible. Um, I wish I could claim the idea as something I came up with, but I can't. It's something I actually saw on YouTube a couple years ago, and I wish I could remember who it was that I took the most inspiration from their video so I could give them credit, but to be honest, I just cannot for the life of me. But it's really a great solution to help provide an organized way to get your Lego up on the shelf. And you know, as your Lego collection grows, changes, you can have the shelving units that change with you. So thanks for joining me for this episode. Hopefully this has given you some things to think about. Maybe it's useful to come up with some ideas of your own. But uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Jason's Bricks in 5.